Hi, and welcome to my channel. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot some of the primary problems that we encounter when we're first interacting with MetaMask. Secondly, I'm going to share some resources that have helped me in the past that will allow you to communicate directly with somebody from the MetaMask team because you do not want to go into random chats or forums or Reddit. No, you need to go directly to the source. It's the easiest way to get scammed. So without further ado, let's get started. Let me share my screen. So first thing is first, you can see I already opened up my MetaMask. Okay, let's hop out. So first thing is you wanna make sure that the funds that were sent, the crypto that was sent to your MetaMask wallet, that they're both on the same network. You see where I'm hovering right here? We know we're on Ethereum. This is a new wallet, but if it was one of my other wallets, we would click on it and we would see here there's Linnea mainnet connected, but you can add multiple networks as you see here. These are all the networks you can add. So you can do Polygon, of course, Arbitrum, Avalanche, BNB, Basenet, all of these, right? Gnosis. Okay, so you have a, several, several options. But for the sake of today's video and in this particular wallet, I have, I'm only using Ethereum. But the main issue that I've noticed, and I've also done this mistake before, is if you send funds from, say, a BNB wallet, a Binance, and you, you notice that they both have the same, it's, it's the same wallet. So you think, no big deal, I'm gonna send funds from my BNB account to my ETH account, it's the same account, they're just different networks, no big deal, right? Well, it is, because they're using the same wallet, but they're entirely different networks. So they might as well be different wallets. They're just, it, it, I understand, you know, it could probably be a lot clearer for new people, and this is one of the main issues crypto has yet to overcome, but I'm just explaining the way it works. So first thing is first, is you need to make sure that you, the funds sent and received are both on the same network. So that's mistake number one. And unfortunately, there is no way to recover this. That's why in crypto, it's just literally, you are your own bank, you take your own responsibility, and you need to make sure you cross all your T's and dot all your I's, and you are sure you are sending funds on the same network to the same network, and you need to make sure that the first four digits, as you can see where I'm hovering right now, and the last four digits of the receiving wallet are correct otherwise that money's lost unfortunately and that's why it's good practice to always send like 10 you know like 10 usdt like the equivalent of like 10 dollars or the equivalent of 20 dollars, just to test and make sure that you are on like it's safe you know it's safe to proceed and send and send a larger amount that's step one step two we'll hop back in is you need to make sure you click on these three dots, you need to make sure that you are on, that you are running the latest, sorry, that's not, oy. where is it? You need to go to account, is that right? No, back out of there. You need to make sure that you are running the correct version. See, so we went to about settings. So once again, let's back out. You go to these three dots at the top right hand corner you go to settings then you're going to scroll down you're going to go to about and this is where you see the version you're running this is also a common mistake and if you contact and are successful enough to contact and speak to an agent this is what they're going to tell you and i know this because this is something i went through so in my case i am running the latest version Actually, if you Google it and you go into forums, you'll find the latest version is actually 11.7.3. So I'm on the very latest version. So that is step number two. Step number three, if for some reason you don't see your funds listed, is go directly to Etherscan. So to go to Etherscan, which is like the receipt depository. If there's a ledger 
somewhere you can go to see transactions, this is the same thing. This is the equivalent. You would click on the three dots and then you would click view on Explorer. Sometimes there's a delay. Often it's due to the version that you're running or maybe your computer's glitching. That's a separate topic. But you would go to Etherscan, uh, you click on the go to Etherscan and it brings you to this page. And don't get overwhelmed. All you have to do is go to the bottom, look at transactions that is in blue here, and you will see all the transaction hashes, which are just the transaction IDs that have been transacted on your account. You'll see the method, the block, and the block is a separate conversation. You don't have to really worry about it, but in crypto uh, and in, yeah, in crypto, all transactions go that get verified through multiple distributed uh, validators. They all, as soon as it's validated, a certain amount of transactions go into one block and then it's forever encrypted and that's why no one can change it. So that's what this represents. This is the block that this transaction of mine went into that's forever unchangeable. This is, this is going into forever. It'll show you how old it is, when it happened, from what wallet to what wallet. The first transaction I did where I'm hovering was from one of my previous wallets mm -hmm. to, to this new wallet. And the second transaction I did was through Uniswap. If you saw yesterday's video, we bought some crypto. I showed you how to do it on a DEX on Uniswap. It's a really easy, quick little video that shows you how to do this because this is one of my preferred methods. And yeah, so this is where you can come and see your transactions. And this is so valuable because if you scroll up, you'll see the overview, you'll see what your balance is. And this is where you can actually see your balance. Sometimes it doesn't update in your wallet due to the one of these, you know, common errors that I'm explaining. Or sometimes just it's network delay. You know, traditional banks have two, three, five, seven day, two week long delays. In crypto, it's usually just a few minutes or a little bit longer. Um, sometimes it can be up to an hour if we're in the middle of a bull season and things are very, very busy. Everyone's trying to buy and sell. But this is where you'll see the actual value that is in your wallet, whether or not it's displayed in your MetaMask wallet. Okay, so this is extremely valuable. Actually, people get all nerdy on this and will come and you can search for any, see at the top where I'm hovering, you can search for any address, any transaction, the TXN hash, any block, and you can see all transactions pretty much from everybody and anybody operating on Ethereum network you can find it here and people go into these crazy rabbit holes and are just searching and, and this is what is so amazing and why no one can lie about a transaction anymore unless they use um, like Tornado or something like these, these uh, services that will mask your ID, your transaction ID. That's a separate conversation, which I can also make a video on. Let me know if you want me to do this. Uh, but anyway, this is where you can validate everything. People can't lie. You can look up if a transaction actually happened, if it didn't, from who. You can find out who sold, who dumped on your project. You can find that here. You won't find their name, but you'll find their wallet. So anyway, just letting you know. Okay, so that is the third method is checking Etherscan. The next is the most helpful resource. I kid you not, when I've had crises, I've gone searching on the internet for how to get a hold of a community. And for some reason, it's not so evidently promoted. If you, for instance, let's go to MetaMask, right? We're having an issue. MetaMask support, let's see where it takes us. It takes us here. It says, how can we help you? All right, great. I want to start a conversation. Okay, let's start a conversation. And boom, you can talk directly to 
a bot on MetaMask. Actually, that was a lot easier than it was for me when I first needed help. And I think it's because I was seeing red. I was in panic. And so I, I didn't, I just like didn't know what to do. I immediately, my instinct was go ask somebody who knows more than me in crypto, like what to do. That was my instinct. Maybe it's because I'm a girl. I don't know. I was like, help. <laughs> and the thing is, which is awesome, MetaMask has it built in. So just go here and ask a question, you know, so pick the option that you need help with, right? So like assets. And then it'll take you through a series of, you know, self-eliminating questions. It's gonna make sure, like wants to know what is going on with you, say missing tokens. It's going to then ask you if you can see the transaction on Block Explorer, which is Etherscan, what I just showed you, and you'll say uh, no, right? can't see it and then it's gonna give you all these questions it's gonna that basically I already told you so make sure you're on the right network etc anyway once you get through a series of all these questions it will eventually connect you with an agency speak to an agent boom I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to waste anyone's time but they're great and they're fast and they will help you right away so nobody panic you're fine all right, so that said, if they are unable to help you, they'll escalate you higher to the security team. And at that point, if you feel you've been hacked or say right off the bat, you feel like you've been hacked or your account's compromised, you can't delete an account in MetaMask, but you can uninstall it. So to do that, you would just, uh, let's go to MetaMask. And then you will, where is this? Lock, support, expand. No. Where is it? Hmm. Oh, here we go. How to uninstall it. You just literally remove it from the, the your extensions. Yeah, so you just right click. I'm a new Mac user, so click on it. Hello, that's not what we want to do. Yeah, it's not cooperating. Mm -hmm. Start. Da -da -da -da. There you go. So you, you, you go to your extensions itself. Sorry, it's been a while. You go to extensions itself, manage extensions where I'm hovering. It'll take you to this page and then sim simply click remove and then it'll remove it for you and then it's gone. So you can't actually delete it. You just remove it and then you just come back and reinstall it. So that's that. And then lastly, their community is great. If you go to their community, MetaMask's community, so here we go back to support.metamask.io, you have all these options and they're really great. You, you can pretty much find answers to all your questions and they're updated in real time. So kudos to MetaMask. It will ask you to set up an account, which is a little annoying. I will say that when you first get there you think oh because i clicked the button from within metamask it should connect me directly they should know who i am right it's through my wallet no they make you um well you can connect through metamask but um i did it through email let me see what happens if you connect through metamask okay so i was just feeling skeptical about my account in general because it was compromised so I didn't want to connect through my wallet. I was just like a little weary of that. Second option is your email. So you do actually have to log in, which is just a security measure. So they know a little bit more about who you are and that you're a real person and you're not just trying to mess with them. So that said, this is what you do. And what you don't do is just go to Reddit once again or to any random Discord community. Don't do that. Just don't do that. There's so many scammers everywhere. Even if you think you're in a safe space, you're probably not. 
So anyway, that's today's video. I hope it was helpful for somebody because I know that even though maybe what I explained sounds simple, when you're new to crypto and your funds are missing, you're seeing red, you're in panic. And I just wish that when it had happened to me, I had been able to go to YouTube and there had just been like this immediate video on how to help you solve it, especially when you're new. Okay, if this sounds good, please like and subscribe if you found this useful. Please leave comments if anything that I said sounds not simple or you'd like me to further clarify. I'm happy to do that. And that's it for today's video. Thank you. And we're still going to go through GMX. And the next video is on airdrops. Very likely tomorrow will be a video on some of the hottest airdrops, which will give you the ability to make money, free money. You basically just follow some steps and they deposit, they airdrop tokens. And some of these tokens, seriously, some people just make a career of farming airdrops only. This can easily become like, a simple airdrop can become like two hundred and fifty dollar thousand dollars worth or five hundred thousand. It's like unbelievable money in a bull run, free money that you can mine in advance now just by spending five to ten minutes. So actually, I may make that video now once and for all, and I will release it as soon as possible. Okay, talk to you soon. Ciao.